Oh, hi there, YouTube. I'm back again today for another game review. And today, very excited to check it out. Most or least from Fun Games, bro. This is for four to eight players, ages 13 plus. It'll take, I don't know, about 20 to 30 minutes to play. And in most or least, you are going to be going around the table and you're going to be answering a question that will either have three options for you or a most or least question. You're going to write that, or well, you're going to pick a card and that will be your answer. Then everyone else at the table is going to try and guess the answer that you put out. If they guess it correctly, they get points. If enough people guess you correctly, then you get points. And you're going to do that taking turns, reading a question each different round over the course of 25 rounds trying to get the most points it's a very light simple party game but is it worth adding to your collection let's open it up and i'll tell you what i think all right then we're gonna take a look at what you're gonna get inside of most or least so first and foremost we have a handy dandy rule sheet it's half of a page and it should have you up and running in no time at all no real questions i have it's a very simple game so i can teach you how to play right now so thumbs up on the rule booklet so in most or least you're gonna be playing over the course of 25 rounds which sounds like a lot but in actuality it's not that long scoring points by either answering the questions on these cards or successfully predicting somebody else's personality and what they how they would answer the cards in front of you what am i talking about let's get into the components then we'll get into the gameplay so first component wise everyone's going to get these three cards right here you're going to get one two three most and least and you're either going to be answering most least or one two three the questions are either going to be uh these these two or these three then, once everyone has those cards, one person is going to randomly go first, and you're going to go around the table. Going first does not give you an advantage, it says in the rules, even though I would argue it does give you a slight, ever so slight advantage, but that would be more like a strategy game thing. So, for the most part, no, it doesn't give you any advantage. So, you're going to flip over a card, and you're going to read it out loud to everybody. You'd probably freak out the most if, one, you walked into a spider web, two, zoo monkeys threw poop at you, or three, bird crap landed on your head. So now I'm going to write, I'm going to pick out the answer that would freak me out the most while everyone else tries to guess it as well. So I'm not really scared of spiders, so one's probably not going to do it. Zoo monkeys through poopy would actually make me laugh a good deal. And bird crap landing on my head would actually, it'd probably make me laugh as well, but I will say this. If I walk into a spider web, no big deal whatsoever. That's not it. Zoo monkeys through poop. Hey, uh, I'm at the zoo. I'm near the monkeys. I kind of had to know that that could potentially happen. You know, you you you, you got to know that that could happen. Three bird crap landed on your head. You're never prepared for that. Yeah, and unless maybe you're in a bird sanctuary or something, you're just not prepared for that. So I guess I'd freak out of that the most. Honestly, I wouldn't care about any of them. So I put down three. Then let's just say this person put down this, and this person put down this, uh, and uh, this person put down this. So we flip it over, and we reveal, and we see what we got. So we got a 3, a 1, a 2, and a 3. So, how it works is, the only way that the person who read the question is going to score points is if at least 50% of the people got it correct. So in this per example, one-third of the people got it right, so I would not get a point. This person would not get a point because they guessed incorrectly. This person would not get a point because they guessed incorrectly. And this person would actually get two points because they are the only person to get it correct. Uh, normally, you only get one point for uh, getting the guess correct, but since they're the only person to do it, they would get two points. We would all take back our cards. We'd mark on a handy-dandy little score pad that that person got two points. Nobody else got any points. And then this person right here would read out a question. And as you can see, that's why 25 rounds is not that much because we just finished one round. And I would recommend actually explaining your answers because I think that does make the game a little bit better. So let's do another one. Uh, most likely to be true 100 years from now. Man steps foot on Mars, a Bigfoot is captured alive, hemorrhoids are finally cured. Well, I think this is a pretty... Ooh, ooh, this one's actually not pretty sure. So I'm 99.9% .9 sure that we're going to step foot on Mars, but I'm also 99.9% .9 sure hemorrhoids are finally going to be cured as well. Uh, that one, probably not. So I would just pick one of those. Uh, but we'll just give you some of the other questions. You'll get a feel for them. So we'll just grab a couple off each of them. Most likely award you received, goofball of the year, decent person of the year, romantic dreamer of the year. Uh, goofball, for sure. Uh, superstition, most likely to bring you good luck, crossing your fingers, carrying around a rabbit's foot, eating beans on New Year's. Uh, that one's just good fiber, so I guess we'll go with that one. Uh, most romantic way to say I love you on a billboard, on an engraved gift, carved in a special tree. Hmm. For me personally, it'd be on a billboard. I want the whole world to, to see something. But for my wife, uh, I would probably say carved in a special tree because then we could go back and we could visit that tree and that would just be like our tree. So yeah, she would say that. I would say this. 
ancient home remedy you most tr likely try for a sore throat. Gargle with vinegar, gargle with moonshine, gargle with soapy water. Uh, I'm going to go with gargle with moonshine there, uh, just because I've never heard of that. But I imagine that would definitely, uh, that would do something. It's either going to do what you want it to do, or you could just swallow the moonshine and have yourself a whole different set of problems. Uh, most believable wives tale. Counting sheep helps you sleep. Bedtime snacks cause nightmares. A full moon can aggravate people. Uh, counting sheep helps you sleep because I actually know for, for, for me that one actually does kind of work. I have attention deficit hyper disorder and just being able to focus my brain on one thing will help me out a lot. But that's the kind of questions you're going to get. Uh, oh, let's see if we can find some of those most released questions. Yeah, so we'll get a couple of those. Award you'd most like... Oh, wait. Beep. There we go, we got two of them. Uh, you'd most or least likely accept a role on a TV reality show as a jobless hobo street bum. Absolutely, absolutely, 110%. I have no shame in my game. You'd most or least likely hire an experienced fortune teller to predict your future. The key word here is hire. No, I'm not paying for that. But well, there you go. You can do that over the course of 25 rounds. Whoever has the most points will be the winner of most or least. Alrighty then, most or least from Fun Games, bro. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, games not going to be for everybody for a variety of different reasons. If you're looking for a strategy-style party game, this one is not going to be for you at all. It is a very light, simple, mass-market-feeling style game. There is zero strategy in this game. It's just how well do you know other people? How well do other people know you? This is more of a icebreaker, getting-to-know-you kind of game. No, it's not an activity. It actually is a game. Because a lot of the times when I play stuff like this, it feels more like an activity. This one definitely feels more like a game, which I do like, because you're keeping score over the uh, course of 25 rounds. It's also somewhat repetitive. You're going to do the same thing over and 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 over again. Nothing breaks up the monotony except for sometimes I get most release questions and sometimes I get one, two, three questions. That's another comment I have of this game. Um, if you get the most release questions when you're the question reader, you have a higher probability of getting a point that round. So there is some balancing issues there, but honestly, most people who are going to play this game are not going to care. Like when I played it, I didn't care because I realized what the game was. So, oh, this guy got two most release questions. So yes, yeah, statistically, he was more likely to get points than me, but who really cares when you play a game like this? Any other cons I have of the game? Yeah, some of the questions are duds. Some of them you'll read and they'll just be like, eh, this is, I don't know, I don't care. And sometimes you'll be like, most or least likely to do this. And it's like, it's something dumb. And most people will be like, yeah, obviously I'm gonna do that. Um, yeah, some of them fall flat. Most of them don't, but some of them do. Last kind I have in this game, it says age is 13 plus, and I took this into my classroom to test that, and I will agree, it is ages 13 plus, if you're going through all the questions. Now, that being said, put a caveat on it, because I did play it in my class, played it twice in my class. Kids really, really, really like this game in my class, and I do want to mention that, I'll mention that more in the pros, uh, but I did have to uh, actively mix out some some questions and how it worked was i was the question master but i just read the card for everybody so it's like oh it's your turn here's the question i'll be like oh nope not this question slide it to the bottom and it's not necessarily that they're like risque or anything like that it's just that some of them i wouldn't want to discuss with 10 year olds now that being said that's a your mother's may very thing and i'm in a classroom setting so that's why a lot of the times i don't want to have these discussions with kids about you know uh different sort of things also, that, the way, that's, that's it. That's all I got. Yeah, I don't have many other cons. You know, it's a very light, simple game, so there's not too many cons in it. So there's not much mechanisms. So moving on to the pros, I thought Most Release was a good game. And I will say this. I think if you like party games and you play a lot of party games that don't have much strategy in them, not saying that in a bad way, just saying that it, it is what it is way, or your family does, I think they're going to enjoy this game to a good deal. Especially if you have kids age... I'd say 9 to maybe 16 or 17, I think they're really going to like this game. And the best way to play this game, in my personal opinion, is to discuss every single card. I said the game is about 20 to 30 minutes. If you discuss every single card, it's going to knock it to about 40 minutes to an hour probably. But you're going to have so much fun discussing different things with all the other people at the table, you're not going to care. This is a spectacular getting-to-know-you icebreaker type thing. Now, as a game, you know, I'd say it's good. I don't think it's great, but I think it's good. But if you are in the market for a game like this, that's all about icebreaking and getting to know people better and learning new things about some of your friends, uh, I think this is a 
a good to great one to check out. And I really do think that while I'm giving this like a you know a seven point two or something like that, I think if you do not play strategy board games, if you do not play strategy party games, I think this would probably be ranked closer to a seven point seven or an eight, like towards the great range, because. Um, it's easy to learn. It's easy to teach. It accommodates eight players very, very well. I got to play it once at eight players. I still liked it at four players. I played it once four players in my class, and I still enjoyed it at four players. Uh, there's lots of cards. I, I kind of wish the cards were double-sided or something like that, but for the most part, there's lots and lots of cards. Even though you're going through 25 questions a game, it's... It's still okay, the amount of cards they have is okay, because unlike a lot of games, like say trivia games, once you've read it, it's like, oh yeah, I might remember that next time. It's like this, you get the card again, it's like, oh, no big deal, because most likely someone else is going to get that card, if that makes sense. So let's just say I got this card, which is like most release, likely to do a fortune teller. So if somebody else gets that card, it's a whole different ball game about what they talk about. But in the end, most release... Uh, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good game. I think if you don't play many strategy games, I think it's going or good. Let me rephrase that. If you don't play many party strategy games, I think this would go to the uh, good to great range. But that is most release from Fun Games Bro. So now here's the immortal question that I always like to answer: Am I keeping the game? I think I'm going to keep it in my classroom the kids liked it in my classroom that much that i think i am going to keep it in my classroom and use it uh situationally uh it's a relatively smaller box you know it's not huge so yeah i'm going to keep it in my classroom for now i don't think i would keep it at home on my party game shelf because most of my party games are strategy -esque style games but there you go that is most released from fun games bro if you enjoyed this review please sure to click on that subscribe button down below and also, in the show section down below, if you want to help out the channel, click on that Amazon link down below. Buy anything on Amazon for the same amazing great prices, and it throws a couple pennies my way. And in the comments below, let me know what was your favorite present that you recently got for whatever it was. Valentine's Day, birthday, Christmas. I actually thought of this question because I'm using mine right now. This is Torbjorn's uh, gun from the game Overwatch that my son got me for Christmas, which I thought was absolutely cool. Let's see, can I knock down the camera? Should I knock down the camera? All right. Oh, did knock down the camera. Nice. Good on you. This is actually, yeah. So this is Torbjorn's gun. That's my last favorite present I got. But let me know in the comments below. What is the last favorite present you got? And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.